Hey guys, it's May from Markets with May, and in this episode, we'll be going through part two of why the AMC shorts probably should consider covering. It's been a really busy holiday season for AMC shareholders with two press releases out that have four kind of big chunks of corporate action for the marketplace to digest. Now, two days ago, I recorded my initial reaction, and in that video, I kind of wasn't sure the positive benefit to the AMC shareholder on the immediate. But now, after reviewing all of the detail, I actually think the AMC shareholder doesn't have much longer to wait but it really depends on how the vote goes. Now, this is the second part of a two-part video series that goes through the two press releases in greater detail. You really have to understand what the capital raise did for AMC shareholders and APE shareholders in order to appreciate why this vote that's coming up could really hurt the short sellers by a lot. Now, there's really two things the board has to vote on. They have to vote on the APE AMC share classes remerging together, and they also have to vote on a 10 for one split. And I'm putting this video out because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there when it's clear to me now that I've had time to fully understand these four parts that this unambiguously benefits both APE and AMC shareholders. Now in this video, I'll go through each of the two pieces of the vote individually, and I'll also talk about some of the things I'm hearing that are just not accurate. But before we get into that, I got to give the disclosures. Past performance is not indicative of future returns. This is not investment advice. This is for educational purposes only. This is my opinion, okay? And the second thing that I would do is a shout out to gorilla.net. Money goes where it's treated best. I work with them because they are dedicated to educating investors to making their own investment decisions. Now, I also want to indicate that I do own the APE shares. I do not own the AMC shares. Now let's go through the first part, which is the remerge of APE with AMC. Now the APE shares were given as a dividend to all AMC shareholders. It was non-dilutive and that happened circa August. I have a full video that goes through that in a bit more detail. The street had been shorting the APE shares because the purpose of the APE shares had been to create dilution and raise capital. And so a lot of the street went a little bit wild shorting this stock so aggressively. Now, I recommended this around December 6th at 80 cents a share because when I looked at the math, the amount of spread that these two were trading at, like almost seven times higher for AMC versus APE, more than baked in the dilution. In other words, if you readjusted the market cap of the APE shares to what it implied was what you were getting AMC for, you were more than paid for the capital raise, which needed to happen anyways because you needed to improve this balance sheet. Now, in the other video, I go through both the debt and equity capital raise and how it resulted in a bunch of free money for both APE and AMC shareholders. And so definitely have a look at that. But it's also really important to focus in on, in this video, how many shares were short and what precisely should be the spread between APE and AMC. Now, as we can see from the FAQ sheet on APE shares on the AMC Investor Relation website, that you can convert the shares and that that would require the board to put it to an investor vote. Now we can also see from question 11 of that same press release that the AMC preferred equity units, the APE shares do have the same economic value and voting rights, meaning that the reverse conversion of these should actually come out more or less one for one. It's slightly unclear about any dilution and how that would be accounted for though. But before you get too excited and think that it's obvious that you should go long the APE shares and short the AMC shares, I want to actually talk to you a little bit about this other mechanical dynamic called short selling or naked shorting. Now I'm using Fintel's data, which may be slightly delayed, but their information comes off the NYSE. And if you'll see this, there's 44 million shares short. And then as a percentage of float for the APE shares, that's about 8.6%. And then there's a bunch of off exchange short volume, such that the off exchange short volume ratio is about 50%. Now that indicates that it's possible that this short interest is understated. Now it's gonna get a little bit technical here, but I'm gonna do my best to explain this cleanly. 
the bulls have been saying that a lot of people are naked shorting the ape shares and that's supposed to be a big no-no uh this short ex this off exchange short volume ratio gives a lot of credence to what they're saying except that the stock lending folks and other people will say no because the hypothecation agreement allows you to actually have fairly high volumes of shorts so long as enough of them are being closed out appropriately at the correct time if the bulls are right it means that the recorded short interest of 44 million shares is massively understated and we about to find out now it doesn't quite matter either way because regardless if the shareholders approve the remerger of ape with amc it's going to be painful for the short sellers just on the 44 million but if that is understated it's even more painful now ape shares are going to turn into amc shares and the fact is that there's still a pretty good spread between them so there is nothing to make the ape shareholders sell their shares and allow the shorts to cover so just to be crystal clear if the conversion happened right now today with ape trading around a dollar 70 and amc well over four dollars and you will be short amc shares and your loss will begin around a hundred percent now that would imply that if the ape shareholders refuse to sell then everybody shorting ape is going to be driven into the amc market to cover but remember the amc shares puts you at a loss of over a hundred percent now let's talk about the amc side now there's one other dynamic you kind of need to understand about AMC stock. Right now, it's also the case that AMC has quite a lot of short interest. Now again, we go back to the Fintel data, but this time we look at the shorts on AMC stock. And this comes again off the NYSC, but a lot of times this data can be slightly delayed. We see that there's 100 million shares that are short on AMC with almost a 20% short interest ratio and off exchange short volume of almost 60%. So now if we put the two together, you'll have two piles of huge short selling coming together. But one set of those short sellers is going to be down around 100% if the transaction were to happen today or in the near future. But not to get too conspiracy theory on this, it means that whoever is short the APE shares or the AMC shares, it's to their benefit to try to get you to sell your AMC shares right now or to further short the AMC shares. Now let's talk about getting a locate versus naked shorting. Now, assuming that these people are not naked shorting, but there is in fact a locate on each and every one, once the shares merge, the broker dealer is still gonna to have to get a locate on all of these new short shares that came in, I'm gonna call it legally, right? So the naked shorts, really your borrow cost should go up by a lot. Now let me clarify that a little bit. The ape shares will essentially be gone, but it's unclear that when they merge, that the shareholder of record, which will be all these private equity firms, actually signed a hypothecation agreement and didn't just register the shares directly with AMC. Hypothecation is central to being able to legally sell stock short. With the case of ape shares converting over, if the private equity firm that just received the shares refused to post their shares with a broker dealer, but instead register them directly with AMC, then upon the closure, it will be very, very difficult for the short sellers of ape to be matched with AMC stock. In other words, they'll have more short interest coming in from the APE shares, but they won't necessarily have an equivalent number of stocks that can be lent out. In other words, APE shareholders, take profits if you must, but try to keep a couple of APE shares to squeeze out the shorts. Now, if you're a prime broker and can confirm this, stick it in the comments, I wanna know, because this is a big if, all right? If these shares are registered directly with AMC, then yeah, they're coming off the market. And that has an implication to this thing called the borrow rate. Fun fact about shorting stocks, you oftentimes have to pay what's called a borrow rate. And that borrow rate increases for hard to borrow stocks of which AMC is definitely a hard to borrow stock. Now the borrow rate can increase in value if it becomes increasingly hard for the broker dealer to find shares that are being lent to the marketplace for shorting. As a result, the borrow rate becomes another mechanical factor that should help squeeze out the shorts. 
Now let's go to the second part, which is how does the reverse split affect a problem for the shorts on AMC? And my answer is gonna be a little bit controversial. There are two parts to this. Now the first reason why you should vote yes has to do with the NYSE $1 stock rule that got us into this mess in the first place. This rule requires that you trade over a dollar for 30 days on the cure period or else you will be delisted and that can reduce the liquidity on the stock. The reverse merger will mean that for a while, the shorts will have to move that needle all the way back down to a dollar in order to have any kind of issue of being pushed off the NYSE. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb with this second reason and it has to do with the options market. I'm gonna go ahead and say, if you are a longtime options market trader and can confirm this, that would be amazing. I have quite a lot of experience in the options market, but even this is beyond how I could think about it. The issue with AMC is that the vol in AMC, the volatility is actually extremely high. Now the quirk of this is that because it's about $4.40, every $1 move in this stock is almost 25% of a movement and the volatility reflects this. You have vols that are well in excess of 150% and in some cases almost 200%. Now a reverse split in the stock will mean that the options strikes will be really wide when they actually are recalculated on the following day. Right now the increments are 50 cents, but if it does a 10 for one split, the increments will be $5. Now the way things trade at $5 is very different than the way they trade at $50. And if this transaction were to happen on a Thursday night, then you would have one day to try to figure out where to cover this. And that could be really, really painful. My suspicion is that even if it doesn't happen on a Thursday night, but happens during the week, anyone that is long the puts is gonna have to really do some swift work to make sense of what the Greeks will be. In other words, if it's a short dated option, which oftentimes people are playing short dated options, you're gonna have theta decay, vega and gamma to all consider in the middle of a reverse split where short interest has massively increased relative to a decreasing borrow rate. Okay, that's a lot of jargon, but essentially, if you're an options trader, it's gonna be really hard to calculate what these options are worth if both those transactions go through at the same time. Now, when I started to try to do the math on this, the struggle was real. So if you're just smarter than me, which I'm super cool with, stick it in the comments below. But I do think that these increment changes do create a mechanical issue that could be problematic for people that are long puts. Now, some of the reasons that I heard people being told, which seemed really inaccurate to me, the first one was that the cost basis increases in some way that's detrimental to AMC shareholders. And that, is really awkward. If your accountant is telling you that, I'd really like to better understand why, because ultimately the cost basis is used for you to visually be able to buy and sell the stock. What's actually happening is capital gains off of the market value, the total market value of where you entered the stock price at. And that shouldn't change. Now the second thing I heard is that the reduction of shares after you dilute the shares back through and then reduce the share count hurts retail investors because there'll be less shares for them to buy and sell. And quite frankly, that's just not true. As things currently sit, the price of AMC will be well below $100. Usually retail investors truly get hurt if the price of the stock somehow reverse splits to over 1,000 or something that is truly astronomical for anyone to try to buy. Another piece of misinformation was that the equity portion of the capital raise went to hedge funds that were short and were covering on the cheap. And that's just a total lie as well. It actually went to debt holders as a function of restructuring the debt and thereby improving uh, the balance sheet and the financial statements. That I go through in the last episode. Another piece of misinformation I've heard is that this is all a scam and there will be no reverse split or a merger vote and that this is just fake news on APE. But as you'll see here, Antara has agreed to hold their APE units for 90 days and vote them at the special meeting, meaning they're gonna approve these two shareholder recommendations. There really isn't any trick here, guys. I'm not sure why people are looking for one. This is really simply put to squeeze out the shorts.
And for whatever reason, the lies associated with this one often say that it's Mr. Aaron that's selling his shares. It's not. It's actually the Ape share units, which are well described in the FAQ on the Ape units as to what they were going to do. A couple of additional items. Since this is a reverse split, if you're short something that is less than a 10 lot of those shares, you need to cover because it's going to actually be really hard for you to cover a fractional share. If you own a fractional share, it shouldn't actually cause you too much grief at all. That's also true if you're short less than 10 options or you're short some odd lot of options. Don't have them in the portfolio. It's really painful to try to close out partial options. The last thing I wanted to mention is a lot of people were under the impression that the eight shareholders did not get a vote. I'm gonna show you the excerpt from the FAQ. Here you can see very clearly that the eight shareholders absolutely do get a vote. Now, as relates to the merger of Ape shares back into AMC, I'm obviously going to vote yes because I'm an Ape shareholder, but I think there's lots of reasons why the AMC shareholder would also want to vote yes. The first and foremost is that if I'm right on what would happen to the shorts, they should get squeezed pretty hard on this, and that would probably make a lot of AMC shareholders very happy. The second reason is because, quite frankly, you don't want a stub that is being traded at one-seventh the value of AMC. The voting rights are equivalent, and it really puts the company in an awkward place as relates to hostile takeover. Now, if you want me to do a separate video on hostile takeovers, just stick it in the comments below. But what I'm saying is that if you've got one set of shares that are so deeply discounted, it runs the risk of someone buying up the shares, replacing the board, and replacing Mr. Aaron. But I don't think they'll do nearly as good a job, and it would be bad for AMC shareholders. I would say that because there's so much complication in this one, if you're totally new to the game of Ape and AMC, it's not a bad move to just take a pause and stay out of it. That's all I have for this episode. If you found value in this, like, share, comment, subscribe to my channel. Here's a link to the previous video and here's a link to other videos that I thought you might enjoy. Hopefully I'll see you in one of those.